Tonight's the anniversary of the passing of Rebbe, Rebbe Hashem Nishma I want to share a few stories in connection to the Rebbe Hashab's Bar Mitzvah. Uh, the Rebbe Hashab, when he turned 11 years old, his father, the Rebbe Arash, told him that the Tzemach Tzedek, his father, said that in order to reach perfection, you have to put on the film. But you should put on the film in secret. No one needs to know about it. And so the Rebbe Hashem began putting on the film already from the age of 11 years old. The custom was in the home of the Chabad Rebbeim that all the children would uh, memorize all of the six orders of the Mishnah, all parts of the Mishnah, by the time they turned Bar Mitzvah. All the Rebbe's would memorize all the Mishnayas when they, before their Bar Mitzvah. The Rebbe Rashab, he finished all the Mishnayas when he was already 12 years old. By the way, what I'm sharing with you tonight is from an excellent book uh, from Eshom Dover Aftzen, gathered from the teachings of the um, our Abayim, and also from the teachings of various, uh, uh, the tradition of Hasidim compiled there uh, on a book on the life of the Rebbe Rashab. So the Rebbe Rashab, he finished all Mishnayis at the age of 12. And to celebrate this, his father, the Rebbe Marash, at that time in the 20th of Cheshun, that Shabbos, many Hasidim came to Lubavitch apparently to celebrate the Rebbe Rashab's birthday, the age of 12 years old. Or, and the Rebbe, the Rebbe Marash said that he asked his Gabbai, his attendant of Levik, that, that doesn't want to have a, uh, to hold a private, time for private audiences, although many people had come to see him, is tonight I want to be alone. And instead, he asked to summon three of the more prominent Hasidim, Rebbe Zalman Walter Polsky, um, another Hasid, uh, of Neymark, and of Leib of Neville. These three chassidim came, and the Rebbe Rashab, when they was also there present, with, with when these three chassidim entered the room of the Rebbe Rashab, the, the, they saw that the Rebbe Rashab, his son, was there, and the Rebbe Rashab said they should light candelabras. There were six candelabras in his room. Each candelabra had 12 candles. He wanted to light all the candles in, in, in the only six candelabras. And he said that the Baal Shem Tev, he had a custom that he wanted people to memorize the Tilim. The Zitcha Magid wanted people to memorize, addition to the Tilim, they should memorize Hazinu. The Alter Rebbe, in addition to memorizing Hazinu, the Alter Rebbe started uh, custom to memorize the old Mishnayis by the age of Bar Mitzvah. And then the Rebbe Rashab proceeded to uh, say a discourse about the conclusion of all the Mishnayis, explaining the last uh, two Mishnas uh, of, of the, the last two um, teachings of the Mishnah and the order of Shemun Levi, Shemun Chalafta. And he told many stories also about the value, the meaning of memorizing the mission. One of the stories he shared at that time, you know, a few months ago, I shared the story of the altar of Son Ramesha. I don't think I shared this story, which is the story of Ramesha's bris. The altar of uh, at the time of Ramesha's bris, the, the bris was scheduled to start and the altar said to wait. And they're waiting and waiting and waiting. No one knew why. They're waiting all this time, but the uh, the Alter Rebbe did not want to start the bris until this uh, Jew showed up, and he was it was it was a hot summer day, and yet this guy was dressed in a fur coat, and so the Alter Rebbe was excited to see him, and he honored this man to place the baby in the chair of El Yoanavi, and also he asked him to give the baby. Uh, wine, as, as is customary, 
that by the bris, when we get to the words in the in the prayer, but the maya chai with with blood, there is life, referring to the merit of the midst of circumcision. So at that point, the baby is given from the wine of the cup of um, from the cup of wine that's used at the bris. So the altar was said, asked this 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 uh, shepherd what came to give the baby the wine. And all the chassid were wondering, who is this guy that the altar was waiting for? And they asked him, what's your name? All he would say was, he is Betzalel, the shepherd. When he left, he stayed that night and he left. When he left, they asked the Alter Rebbe, who was this guy? So the Alter Rebbe said that this man is an expert in the Babylonian and Jerusalem, Talmud and Tesefta and Sefri and Sefra. And he's been wandering for 40 years, wandering. He's been a shepherd for 40 years. And the reason, although he knows all this Torah, the reason why he is merited to have a revelation of his godly soul, the reason why he feels his godly soul, it shines in him his godly soul, is because of his constant repetition of Mishnayis. Because he constantly repeats Mishnayis by heart, that's why his Neshama shines in him. And he shared other stories, Zebra Shab with the three, Zebra Marash with the three Chassidim and with Zebra Rasha. Then the other three Chassidim left. Rebbe Rashab thought he was meant to leave as well, but he wasn't. And Rebbe Rashab, his father told him to stay. And when he stayed, the Rebbe Marash proceeded to explain to him the conclusion of all the Mishnayis. The end of all the Mishnayis is a tractate called Uksin. Uksin talks about the laws of the stems of fruits and whether they contract impurity and then Rash explained that when someone memorizes all the Mishnah, so he merits to have, yes, Mishnah, same letters as Neshama, exactly. So when someone memorizes a Mishnah, he merits, he merits that his Neshama shines in him. And so he has to also be cautious of the fact that although his Neshama is shining, he still hasn't gotten rid of the stem. There's still something in him that has to be fixed. And that's the point of the last tractate of Talmud, that to, to remind the person who has memorized the Mishnah and is merited to, to, to feel his neshama, he hasn't, he's not done yet. And the second last mission of all of Talmud talks about the laws of honey. Because once a person has concluded that tract and they've rectified all negative things inside of themselves, they may feel that they could be, they could have honey, meaning they could feel very sweet about their accomplishments. The Torah says that all sourdough and all honey cannot be offered to Hashem, which means that, that depression and arrogance, meaning, meaning sweetness, meaning, meaning feeling sweet about, who, about your accomplishments and feeling great, great about yourself, blowing yourself up, those are not allowed to be used as for any sacrifice. So the Rebbe was saying, the Rebbe was saying that, that um, yes, you feel great accomplishment, but you cannot allow that to bring yourself to have any uh, arrogance. In the year before the Rebbe Rosh Hashanah's Bar Mitzvah, he had a private audience with his father, the Rebbe Marash, and he asked his father, when you study Torah, at what point can you say that you've learned the subject? At what point can you say that you really, you've got it, you learned it? So Rebbe Marash explained that when we, in the Shema, when we, um, talk about the myths of studying Torah, the word the Torah uses for studying Torah is vishinantam. Vishinantam means something which is very sharp. So that means not just limanatam, which means to study, the instruction of vishinantam means that you should know it really well, it's sharp. You, you're able to like immediately, uh, without hemming and hawing, say what the laws of the, of the Torah are. And then he said levanecha, which means your children, also means libun. And it's very shining, it's, it's shining clear in your mind what the Torah is saying. And then he explained to him the words, Bevesecha. the Torah says you should study the Torah, teach it to your children. And while you're sitting at home, when you lie down, and when you wake up. He explained, lie, when you're at home, is referring to the soul's presence in this world, in your home, when you're alive in this world. Other places in Hasidus, actually, it says the word your home refers to the souls in Gan Eden. And going on the journey refers to arriving in this world. But in that occasion, Ebrash said, said that your home refers to being alive in this world. 
lying down and getting up refers to passing away and being resurrected. So then, so then Rash was saying how you have to um, study Torah and be very clear what you're learning. Then he told them that the Talmud advises us to divide our study into three sections. We should spend a third of our day studying the Chumash, the Bible, a third of the day studying the Mishnah, and a third of the day studying the, the Gemara, the Talmud. So he explained that the, the word Chumash is also, the Chumash is also referred to by the word Mikra. Mikra means to call. So he said that the first step of studying Torah is about summoning forth the hidden love you have for Hashem. Mikra, the Chumash, would also not just referring to studying the Chumash, it also refers to the exercise of trying to draw forth your love for Hashem, to call out that love you have for Hashem. That's what, that's what it means when it says that a third of your time should be spent studying Chumash. That means that you should spend some time to draw forth, the first step in serving Hashem is to draw forth that love you have for Hashem. Then he said, the next step is Mishnah. The word Mishnah means to change. So the goal is not just that you should love Hashem only, but that love you have for Hashem should, should cause you to change the way you think and the way you speak and the way you do stuff. So Mishnah means to change. And the word Gemara comes to the word Goimer, which means to finish. It means that, it, that, means that you should create vessels for what you learn. That's what the Rebbe Arash told the Rebbe Hashab. In addition to calling forth your love for Hashem, in addition to changing the way you think, speak, and do things, but there should be gemar, there should be a conclusion, there should be completion in the vessel. So the Rebbe Rashab told his only son, the previous Rebbe, that after this audience with his father, he made a great effort to study the code of Jewish law and to train his body to act in sync with the code of Jewish law. The Rebbe Rashab actually was once at a meeting of other rabbis and the other rabbis uh, saw that when he washed his hand, he washed three times in each hand. And technically, it's sufficient to wash two times. As that's, that's what other rabbis say, I, th I thought you only have to wash two times. So Rebbe Rashab said, I don't remember the source. However, I've trained my body to only act in sync with the code of Jewish law, and therefore there must be a source. And, late, and he later told other, said that the source is from Haggai Sashri, as mentioned in Hayom Milm of the 20th of Shah. So the previous Rebbe said that when his father said that I train my body to act and sing with the code of Jewish law, he's not only talking about the code of Jewish law, he's also talking about Hasidus, because he said every discourse in Hasidus, every mimer, is also meant to guide us in our lives. It's also like the code of Jewish law. In other words, we think the code of Jewish law is like very practical. And a Hasidic discourse is maybe something which you know more, more otherworldly, more lofty, not so practical. But he, is told, he said that when his father said he trained his body to act in sync with the code of Jewish law, he meant that not only is, is his father, his body trained to be in sync with the laws of the Torah, but he's also trained his body to be in sync with the Hasidic discourses. He studied the code of Jewish law the same way he studied Hasidic discourses in a way that it, it became part of who he was. Uh, before his birthday, before his bar mitzvah, the Rebbe Maharash, his father, taught him Tanya. He also taught him many things about how the Tanya was written. Uh, the Rebbe Rasha began to memorize the discourses of his father before his bar mitzvah. The first discourse he memorized was the discourse of Shabbos HaGadol, Kama Maus Tevis Aleinu which talks about the great kindnesses that God does for us. Rebbe Rashab, in the last Seder, Passover Seder he had before his Mitzvah, the Rebbe Marash told him, let's go and listen to the way my father, the Tzemach Tzedek, says the Haggadah. So imagine they're in this world and they're listening to the Tzemach Tzedek saying the Haggadah, learning how to say the Haggadah from the Tzemach Tzedek. That was in his, uh, in the last um, uh, Seder that he had before the mitzvah. The, the Rebbe Rashab, before his mitzvah, was asked by his father to visit his great, to visit his uncle, 
Rav Chaim Shneur Zalman, the, uh, who also was a Hasidic Rebbe, and he, he traveled together with two coaches and 12 other, other Hasidim. The Rebbe Marash, Marash told his son, certainly my brother will tell you a Hasidic discourse, which he did. And he gave a bracha to the Rebbe Rashab for his um, bar mitzvah. It was customary for the Rabbeim to give a tip to the teacher of their children of 10 ruble on the day of the bar mitzvah. The Rebbe Rashab's teacher's name was uh, Rabbi Pesach. So he, he gave him the tip and Reb Pesach asked Rabbi Rashab a, 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 a question. Rabbi and Rivka had asked the, the Reb Marash if he's going to give a gartel, a, a, a gartel to the Reb Rashab. And the Reb Marash said, yes, it is proper thing. And a short time later, he gave the Reb Rashab the gartel. So the Reb Pesach, he asked the Reb Rashab, the Reb Marash, he said, at the older brother's bar mitzvah, the Rebbe Rashab had an older brother named Rabbi Zalman Aaron, and he didn't get a card. But the Rebbe Pesach said that he remembers that the Tzemach Tzedek gave the Rebbe Marash a card on his bar mitzvah. And then the Rebbe Pesach told the Rebbe Marash, the Rebbe Marash that when the Tzemach Tzedek gave you the card, he said the discourse, Chag Neha, she girds her loins with strength, which talks about the meaning of a gartel and it's spiritually, the spiritual meaning of a gartel. So the Rebbe Pesach said to the Rebbe Maharash, I was wondering how come the Rebbe Maharash didn't give a gartel to the Raza? Now, the Rebbe Maharash didn't say this, but apparently it seems to me that giving the gartel is something unique that has to do with the next Rebbe. And that's why the gartel was given to the Rebbe Maharash. Of all the sons of Tzemach Tzedek, you got the gartel. And the Rebbe Rashab received a gartel as well, because he was the next Rebbe. But in response to Rebbe Pesach, the Rebbe Rashab only told him, you can't ask any questions on us, meaning on the, on the, the, the way the Rebbeim ask, the way, way the Rebbeim do things. And he said, those who understand, understand. And those who do not understand, do not understand. He did not explain to him why, but um, uh, there, there are those who say that uh, by the Rebbe's wedding, the previous Rebbe, when he put the gartel on the Rebbe, on the Rebbe he said, I'm connecting you to me and me to you in this uh, in, in, in forever. Um, so putting on the gartel apparently has to do with somehow connecting to the future and crowning the next Rebbe to be the Rebbe. That's what it seems like. I don't know. Anyways, but regarding this Gartel, it's not just wearing a Gartel. The Rebbe Marash explained to the Rebbe Hashab the meaning of the Gartel that he was wearing. He said this. He said that there are different kinds of Gartels. He said, hold on. Oh. He said, my father, the Tzemach Tzedek, by my bar mitzvah, the, the Rebbe Marash said that his father, Tzemach Tzedek, told the Rebbe Marash that I, said the Tzemach Tzedek, Tzemach Tzedek said, I was told by my grandfather to wear a silk garter. But you, he said to the Rebbe Marash, you will need to wear a, a leather gartel. And then the Rebbe Marash told the Rebbe Rashab, but you will need to wear a gartel of iron. The Rebbe Marash wasn't referring to a literal gartel. He was alluding to the fact that the Rebbe Rashab, during the years that he would be the leader of the Jewish people, there will be a need for actual sacrifice. He was telling him he's going to have to endure exceptionally challenging circumstances. Rebbe Marash also began wearing a kapata, a silk kapata, at the age of his bar mitzvah. And at his bar mitzvah, Rebbe Marash also gave him some mashke. And someone protested, like, why is he giving a child mashke? So Rebbe Marash said, I'm giving him mashke 
so that he will stop being a child. At the Bar Mitzvah, the Rebbe Marash explained the famous nigan, Nezher Ritzachlavtsi. That nigan is about how people are traveling and they can't wait to get to the innkeeper because the innkeeper has, has mashke, has, uh, has liquor. And so they're, they're traveling and they can't wait to get to the innkeeper, which is nigan means how Hasidim are uh, waiting to get to, we're traveling in the exile, waiting to get to the time of coming Mashiach. And the interim, while we're waiting, we, are, we know the innkeeper, we know the Rebbe has a mashke, has a chassidus, that gives us the wherewithal to get there. So l'chaim, l'chaim, we should have, uh, as on the day of the passing of the tzaddik, it says the tzaddik and Shem has an aliyah and cause salvation in this world, but care of our So we should take a see for each of us and all of us to follow Yisrael. Embassy is true, so care of our and all in Yonim. The main thing is, Nisan, Nigal, Nisan, Asidin, Nigal, we worried in the Nisan, and we should be deemed again in Nisan, take it from your mama. Shlachayim, Lachayim, good luck. Amen. Thank you. Shkoyah. Ben Kodem.